Welcome back to the shop, everybody. Um, I just want to warn you all ahead of time. It's really hot here in central Illinois, so I have side door to the garage open as well as the main door. So if you hear any cars or children or dogs, I apologize for that ahead of time, and hopefully it won't be too bad. What I have in front of me here is a Tentacle Sync E, which is a linear time code generator. What you do with this is you plug a 1 8 inch audio cable into it, and then the other end of the cable into any type of audio gear that has a 1 8 inch input. So what this lets you do is if you have multiple of these or you have a camera that has time code in it as well or um, an external audio recorder, when everything's got running the time code and it's all synced up appropriately, you can just take it into an appropriate um, video editor and the software will automatically line everything up for you. So you don't have to use the hand clap method, so you can line it up by the waveform, or you don't have to use a slate or anything like that. It's, it's a wonderful thing if you've done a lot of video editing and you have a lot of clips to line up manually. So tonight's project is to make an adapter so I can mount this, so I can mount this to most of my camera gear. It's got Velcro on the back of it, but I really don't want to stick Velcro to my actual cameras. So I like to use them for regular photography and that Velcro just won't stay on there that long. So what I have here is a hot shoe adapter, which is designed to get this off of here. You put this in the hot shoe of a camera and then you can thread it into anything that's quarter 20. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a couple chunks of aluminum. So I'm gonna make a couple of these. We're gonna make a little holder that we'll screw on here. We won't need this top one anymore. We'll just use the bottom one. We'll lock tight this fast. And then on the top of this, we'll put Velcro. So let me take you over to the lathe and we'll get started. The first step is to chuck up all the blanks one at a time, face one end so that they are nice and clean, and then drill it and tap it all the way through for quarter 20. Now, since we hit this with a spotting drill, most likely we've raised a small burr, so we're just gonna face out to remove it. That's the first blank done. Let me do the rest off camera. 
I've gone ahead and chucked up a piece of aluminum bar stock. Um, this is going to become the mandrel that will be used to hold the blanks. What we have to do to it before we can use it though is very similar to what we did to the blanks. We're going to face it, turn this side um, down the size a little bit, it's a little too big right now. Um, then we're going to drill it and tap it and then we will Loctite a piece of bolt that was cut off. There we go. Okay, so actually, I let this dry for more than a couple hours. It actually dried for about 36 hours because I got busy with my wife and my son, but we're not back out here. I've got everything set up. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna thread some of the blanks on, and then we're gonna face it to length, and then we're gonna chamfer the bottom end. There, that's the last one. Next step is to move all this out of the way, get the drill out of here so I don't accidentally cut up my hand, and then we'll turn the major outside diameter down to size. Okay, so this is so close to the final diameter, I'm just gonna take one roughing pass and then one quick finishing pass, and then the major diameter will be taken care of. And that's it for that one though. When I did one of the extra the first blanks, I had to take a piece of rubber here, actually like this, 
so I can get a good grip on it and spin it loose without cutting myself. I'll do the rest of these off camera and then I'll bring you back for the next step. So I've gone ahead and reset my stop and now I'm going to turn down this end to the final diameter and then all I'll have to do is chamfer stuff after that. Take a quick measurement, make sure we're on target. So that's it for this one. Let me go ahead and do these other ones off camera. And then again, I'll come back and then we'll show the chamfering. Okay, so I've gone ahead and did a test piece. Now I've got all the numbers on my dial indicator down here and on my cross slide to reproduce the chamfers exactly the same for every single piece. So let's get started. And that's it. Took me a little longer than it will in a couple pieces because I still don't have the exact numbers memorized and I needed to look at my sheet. So I'll do the rest of these off camera and then I think I have one last thing I want to try but maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. As you can see in that previous little video clip, I made a quick tool out of a utility knife blade, a cant twist clamp, and then some scrap steel. And what that let me do is make these nice, perfectly circular, perfectly centered um, loop sections of the Velcro. So all in all, it took me an hour and a half of total time to make all four of these, including the jig. 
and this is how it'll mount on. I'm pretty sure at this point I'm just gonna Loctite it down. And I did a quick test already. Works pretty good. I mean, you don't have to, you know, it's not super hard to get on and off, but yet it's not going to go anywhere and you're definitely not gonna be shaking your camera this violently, at least I hope not. So overall, I'm really happy. Hope everyone enjoyed watching it. I'll see you guys again in the next video.